I am extremely happy and feeling blessed to be here now. I um, I was actually sitting here having a few technical difficulties, but hopefully you guys can hear me. I hope you guys can hear me. I, I hope everything is coming across okay. I am sitting here. Oh, great. I am sitting here as, as I'm speaking, playing with... Um, the cord from my computer because I have plugged it in, I plugged it in, and it tells me that I've only got 35 minutes worth of time left on my battery, and I don't even know why it's on my battery. So my computer is not recognizing my battery pack for some reason, or my plug for some reason, and um, and I don't know how to get it to recognize my plug. And so hopefully we'll get through this show and uh, everything will go just fine. I'm claiming that now and um, everything will be just wonderful. So let me update you guys. You know, I've been OK, so I've got a current there. Um, so you guys, I have been dealing with my dad being in ICU here in Cleveland at Cleveland Clinic after suffering a brain hemorrhage, um, which was kind of brought on by um, his being on Coumadin. He's on Coumadin because he had a blood clot some years ago. So it's been one of those struggles um, over a long period of time. And, um, you know, today I... Okay, so he's still in ICU. He is, uh, he's, his eyes are open uh, sporadically, and uh, which means he's awake, but he's doing this thing that they call waxing and waning. Um, so he's not conscious all the time, but rather some of the time. And, um, and, and we're just, we're just praying and trying to see how that, um, how it all turns out. You know, um, and so I've talked over the last week or two about um, about this whole experience, you know, what this experience is doing for me, what it's meaning to me, um, how I'm seeing him, myself, um, the the what is to happen in the future, all of that stuff. It's just coming up for me in a powerful way. And um, as always, I'm... I'm always at a place of peace and of acceptance and joy and expectancy. And I know sometimes even to myself, I sound a little, um, I, do I want to say, um, I, I don't want to say harsh because it's not, the word is not harsh, but sometimes I I find myself in this place of, of, um, of just knowing uh, and it just brings me such great peace but at the same time there's another part of me that wants to um, you know talk about it from a point standpoint of I would never want to lose my dad but I know that it's a necessity um, that it's part of what our bodies do they just come into this form and they go back out and so whatever way it goes however it turns out I'm at a place of peace with it, and um, but I am hoping for uh, and trusting in the miracle. So, um, so no real change except for he's now awake, and I appreciate all of the prayers and energy that you're sending the way, his way, and my family's way. And you know, anytime, the Course teaches us that anytime we are sending healing energy to anybody, um, whether we're sending it to ourselves, it's like we're healing the entire world. And so it becomes this thing of, of just wanting to drop seeds of love into the atmosphere, not just for him, but for all of us. Because when any one of us are healed and lifted up, all of us benefit. And so I appreciate that. I appreciate the fact that, um, you know, my dad used to give blood all the time. Oh, my gosh. Uh, this computer is trying to go down. 
Um, my dad used to give blood all the time, and he did so because he said to me, he used to say to me all the time, he was like, you never know when you're going to need blood, so you might as well go and give some blood so that when it's your turn um, and you are in need of blood, you get some. So you give and you you contribute to this entire, you know, into the bank or into the the whole you contribute and then um, you reap and everybody reaps. And so um, in that in that vein, I can sit there and say to you that um, I pray for people and I pray for people I don't even know. And uh, and so if anybody has like um, built up a bank account of praying for people and sending positive good energy and good vibes to them, I'm one that does it. And I do it on a regular basis and, and without reason or without expectation, um, simply because I know the truth. And the truth is, is that, uh, yeah, that as I give, as I give to you, I'm giving to myself because there's truly only one of us here. Okay. <clears throat> oh, excuse me. Okay, so here, let me start this off by saying this is a course in miracles. It is a required course. Only the time you take it is voluntary. Free will does not mean that you can establish the curriculum. It means only that you can elect what you want to take at a given time. The aim of the course is not to teach the meaning of love, for that is beyond what can be taught. It does aim, however, at removing your blocks removing the blocks to your awareness of love's presence, which is your natural inheritance. The opposite of love is fear, but what is all-encompassing can have no opposites. This course can therefore be summed up very simply in this way. Nothing real can be threatened, and nothing unreal exists. Herein lies the peace of God. Okay, so I am having major issues here with my with my cord. I don't know if anybody has ever had this issue where their cord just doesn't work. Um, I don't know what's the cause of this. And um, I have plugged it into every socket that is within reach of me. And it's still not picking up a current or not showing my computer on my computer that is plugged in. And so my screen keeps wanting to go down um, to conserve um, battery life. A fuse gone in what? Inside of this um, transformer thing? Would that be it? Yes? Oh, so um, um, I, yeah, I don't know if there's a fuse gone and I don't know how to solve that issue if it is not sure I thought it was a plug it yeah the the um I have the cord and it is plugged into the wall it's plugged into my computer and there's a little square that's halfway through the cord that I think is like a transformer and um, I keep holding this up like you're actually watching me on the on the screen but I know you're not so um and I'm going to, that's what I'm going to try to do. I'll try to pull this up and um, on this other screen as well and then see if I can't do this. Um, yeah, I'm not sure, but I don't want to lose you guys in the process of me talking. But, you know, today I was... Um, I was sitting there. I've been going to... I have gone for the the um, past since since this all began which was two weeks ago um, you guys might remember because I at the last minute said that I couldn't do the show because my father was being rushed to um, away in an ambulance as it was uh, about a quarter a quarter to six when all of this happened I guess no it was 530 and um, he was rushed away to the hospital and um, and so ever since then I have been at his bedside and uh, spending large amounts of time there at the hospital and uh, 
And so it has, you know, we're still going through it. It is, uh, and, and it's been an emotional roller coaster because there are so many different things to deal with as it relates to um, my father and, um, and the stuff. Because then there's the question, I don't know um, if you guys know this, but there's the question of whether or not he'll be able to function um, once, once he is healed, you know, if there's any degree of paralysis, if there is paralysis, then what, to what degree, um, and so it becomes this, this constant thing of trying to figure out, um, I, I mean, so much, I mean, it is just unbelievable how many things we're dealing with emotionally, physically, um, the, the one thing that is, uh, wonderful about, um, about what my dad has done is, is that he is insured till the, to the hilt. I mean, to the nth degree, he's got insurance. So, um, and then he's got, uh, backer insurance and carriers, different carriers. He went for the extended, um, extended care insurance as well. So the the, that part is not something that we've had to play with or, or to worry about, thank God. Um, but, uh, but for the most part, it's like just trying to deal with um, all the other things that could possibly go wrong. Okay, so now I am trying to, okay, so, so let me tell you guys what I'm doing while I'm, while I'm doing this. I'm trying to download Pal Talk on another computer here as I talk to you just in case I get booted off of the computer that I'm currently on. So we'll make this work and, uh, and, um, and it will. So here's the thing. I am righteous. Thank you so much for, for that, um, for your comment there, focus on his health and healing. Um, here's the thing. Uh, it is, I have been, um, and you know, I am, a. a what what I call a prayer. I love praying. I love focusing. I love sending energy to people. And, um, and I know that I receive it in return. I feel so blessed in that to be a part of um, what I think is a circuitry, this, this universal circuitry that we all pay into, just like the bank, the blood bank that I just um, talked about. But it's, it's kind of like going into the circuitry. But the, 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 the interesting thing is, is that um, at a certain point, there is a desire that is necessary on the person um, to, to whom you're praying for, or to whom all this has happened. I know prayer changes everything, but sometimes I think that people in and of themselves lose their willingness to fight. And so I am focused on, not just on my dad's healing, but also the healing of, of, I mean, and, and really all we're doing is healing our minds. But as he heals his mind, as we heal how we look at these things, um, then there will affect a change. And that is what I'm praying for. Because as I see him laying there in that bed, I see a certain um, frustration and resignation on his face at not being able to communicate and at not being able to move. And um, and then it becomes this thing of, of yeah, it's, it's just, um, yeah, just, just wanting him to not, not give up. And so, um, we'll, we'll continue to keep his spirits up and talk and I'm, I'm there and I'm massaging him and, and, uh, just everything that I think is necessary, um, as part of his healing. And so I'm doing it, I'm doing it, I'm doing it. So here we go. I'm doing this. I think Pal Talk tries to sneak stuff in on you here too, don't they? Okay. So so today I want to talk about by thinking loving healing thoughts about him, you are giving him positive energy. Yeah, I you know, I am I am you know, I've always told people I'm not a daddy's girl cuz my dad is a, you know, he's funny. He's funny. You'd have to know him in order to understand why I say I'm not a daddy's girl. Um, but but it's so it's so weird because 
um, I'll go to my dad's house and um, I, I go over his house and I just sit there with him basically and watch, uh, what is that show called? Um, Gunsmoke and, and, and Bonanza and um, the, I, I think we've even watched the Wild Wild West and the Rifle Man and all those little shows. And I sit there and I'm content, perfectly content to sit there with my dad and not talk, but rather just sit there and watch um, whatever he's watching while I read the newspaper, or do whatever we're doing and it'd be good, you know? So I've spent a lot of time with him. I spend quite a bit of time with him and um and so it's you know um it, it it is it's a little hard to to deal with to take but at the same time um uh, yeah it's it's all good it's all good all right so I don't want to talk about that the whole time I am really trying not to focus on that anymore um so yeah thank you uh all right so here's what I do have to do though um, I am going to play some music for you because I need to s get up and get the other password. Oh my gosh, are you guys there still? <laughs> my computer is trying to go down. Okay, so um, let me get up and get the password. And so I need to... Um, uh, let's see, let's see, let's see. Okay, so listen to this real quick, and I'll be right back. And I'll be right back. I cut that microphone off so I don't get feedback. That's what that is, is feedback. One second. Sorry, I do apologize for that. That was just total feedback, and it didn't work out the way I thought it would. Okay, so, um, all right. <laughs> you guys, I feel like I'm making a mess here. And I'm trying to get this done before my computer goes down. So, um, all right. <clears throat> Oh gosh, it is just a mess. Okay, so let me let me let me talk. Let me talk and um, and get this done. Okay, so today I was reading out of the course and out of a few different books because I just thought um, just you know just so much richness. I'm so blessed to to be able to sit there in the hospital room. And um, just just center myself and study and work and do all that I need to do in order for me to be okay. To keep my own spirits up, you know, to stay in a, in a place where I am um, claiming the blessing and knowing that everything is working out as it should. And so um, today was no different. Today I sat there and, um, okay, so <laughs> I sat there and um, I, I did quite a bit of reading and, um, uh, and, and it was just wonderful. It was wonderful. Um, the, the entire experience has just been awesome. Okay, so um, 
how do I get my other pal talk? Um, okay, so here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Let me see. Okay, computer has gone down. It has gone down. And uh, so let's see. All right, so Sandra Bishop. And let's try zero three mm. okay I don't know if you guys can hear me but um Okay, so my computer went down. If that went down, my computer went down, and I don't have a password. Okay, okay, okay. Pal talk. P A L. Okay, so. So let's try this. Bishop and. Um, Is that going to work? Ha! Okay, so... Mm. Okay, so somebody come find me. Um... Alright, so how do I get into the chat room now? Actions, um, join the chat room. This is up under education. Uh, is it under education? Other. Hello? <laughs> Hello? Am I back? Please tell me I'm back. Ah! Ah! Oh my gosh! Okay, so I don't know what you're hearing me through, but I'm assuming that I've got a microphone hooked up. But it, I guess if I'm back, I guess it doesn't matter. Okay, so I'm back and my other computer is dead in the water. Okay, so here we go. Um... And everything was on that other computer, but I fret not. Okay, so here we go. Let me talk. And that's all I really wanted to do. So today I was thinking about this whole entire idea of, um, of, of, of healing. And I kept saying that if I think, if I think that there is something that I possess, some ability that I possess that everybody doesn't possess, then I've already put myself in the wrong frame of mind. Hi, um, good to see you, sweetie. I was, where were you? Where were you? AFK, absent without a cause. What does that mean? Okay, so, um, hey, though, uh, so, so I am, so I kept thinking to myself, like, you know, I have done healing work, um, array from keys, okay, I have done healing work, 
And, uh, and, and it's amazing to me the experiences that I've had over the years of doing healing work. And that's why I'm so grateful for outside prayer because, or people, not outside prayer, but prayer within this system, within this framework that I know that works. Because a lot of times what happens is, is when it's so close and so dear and so intense to you, it becomes this, I mean, it becomes this cloud that, that you have a hard time seeing past. I've had a hard time seeing past. And so while I know the truth, I know the truth about this. I know the truth is, is that I am not my body nor is my father his body, that none of us are our bodies. This is just simply what we have, what we're using right here and right now. It's not our truth. It's not the completion of who we are. And so as I hold on to that, I'm holding on with the awareness that whether, like I said before, and I don't know, I'm sure I said it on here, that 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 Jesus had said, God is not a God of the dead, but of the living all live unto him. So no matter where he is in the process, it is still that life, which is God's life, which is in life. And so it's all a part of this whole thing. So I am not fretting over that. I'm just looking for the lessons that are here. And last week, I don't know, um, or was it last week, where I played that song, The Lessons That the Storm May Bring. Because in the midst of the storm, we know that we go through the storm because that storm is growing us and, and is teaching us something about ourselves no matter what. And so a lot of times what we've done is we simply have forgotten who and what we are. And so this simply reminds us, it's like this gentle reminder that comes to, to you or me or whoever and tells us the truth of our being. And the truth of our being is, is that God, 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 no matter what, no matter where, um, just simply God. And, and that's what I, ah, I love that. I love it. I love it. I love it. So today, um, I've got a, I've got a Course in Miracles PDF on my computer on this thing here that has just, um, died on me. Poor baby. I've got to figure that out. Um, and, and, and sooner rather than later, because I'm spending time over there at the hospital and I don't know what I'd do without, you know, um, having my computer to just basically sit there and, um, and occupy myself while I'm while I'm doing all of the stuff that I'm doing there. So I, you know, I've got to get it fixed. Anyway, um, so as I'm sitting there, I was looking and um and I was reading the Course in Miracles on my online PDF. I, I downloaded it onto my computer. I'm sitting there and I'm looking at it and I thought, oh, this is so good and so wonderful. I want to share it. Um, oh, but look, I just passed by that chapter and that chapter is so good too. But I'm going to backtrack and share some stuff with you out of this one, I do believe. Okay, so... Uh, so it, it says up here in the chapter, chapter five, in healing and wholeness, it says to heal is to make happy. I have told you to think how many opportunities you have had to gladden yourself and how many you have refused. And so it goes through and it, and it talks about this whole thing about um, to be wholehearted, you must be happy. If fear and love cannot coexist, and if it is impossible to be wholly fearful and remain alive, the only possible whole state is that of love. So, um, so while on one hand, and I'll tell you this, uh, while on one hand, I feel really guilty about being okay where I am. Um, uh, of, of feeling a sense of peace with whatever happens to my dad. While on one hand, I feel guilty about that. On the other hand, I'm sitting there and I'm saying, but you know, this is what I, this is what I believe. I mean, I have believed this and, and no matter what situation I've been in, I have believed this and that it's okay, no matter what form you're in, whether you're in the 
in the form of spirit or whether you're in the form of body, wherever you are, it's it's all God. So if if there is, if God is a God of the living and not of the dead and all live unto God, no matter where you are in the spectrum, no matter whether you're in body or in spirit, if that be the case, then it's still just God. There is nothing else. There's no place to go. And this idea is, it, it was so funny at, um, at church this past Sunday, they brought up this concept about hell and Hades and, and where, whether or not the original Hades was some place that they burned trash at. And um, and so Jesus used that example and he talked about it. Um, but whether or not there is this actual state of hell. And so hell is a making of in our minds. It's, it's not a place that we go, but a place where we're at. If you don't know the truth, if you haven't found love. And this is what this course is telling me all the time. It's all about about this love that connects us, this free flow of love that 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 makes me know that that whatever energy is you is also me and I'm flowing into you and you're flowing into me. And um and 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 as I was reading Science of Mind the other day, it talked about this this concept that all of this is is a matter of mind. All of this is about the connection of minds together. So my dad has had a hemorrhage on his brain and he's laying in a hospital because, because he's, had, um, he's had an injury to his brain and that injury to his brain is to his brain and not his mind. The brain is the part of the body that tells us what to do, tells my fingers to move, my mouth to move, my everything. It just, it animates my being, but it is not, it is not who I am. I am a spiritual being having a human experience. I'm in a body. I am not my body. I am not my body. Mm. As much as I may love it, I am not my body. So, um, it, uh, so you know, this, this whole thing, as I read this introduction to healing and wholeness, and, and the invitation to the Holy Spirit, and and as I as I revisited that whole um, that whole chapter, I was just so swept up in um, the awareness that 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 no matter what, love at the basis of all love. I mean, in all, through all, as all, just love. And I don't think that. Um, a lot of times, you know, what we do, we have a tendency, and I, and I see people do this all the time. We have a tendency to look for reasons not to love rather than accepting that our very nature is love. Um, in a book, I Come as a Brother, um, I Come as a Brother by Bartholomew. I think uh, Lynn told me that, um, that they are on here. I have not been able to catch the show. I don't know what time. Um, but in that book, they said that it's not, love is not something you do. It's something that you are. It's not something that you do. It's something that you are. And you can't are something. So if your very essence is love, if my very being is love, if my total existence, if I am because I, I, am, I am an extension of God's love, um, Gene Houston, who talked about that thing saying that God has has um, we are the expansion of God, that lensing, that focal point of God consciousness here on earth. If I know, if I know that the truth is, is that I am simply a part of this wholeness of God, then I am, I, you know, anytime I'm trying to block that, I'm, 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 I'm blocking the very flow, the very essence of who I am. So when we see that people, um, you know, are are sick, 
I mean, you know, when people get sick, we, you know, we can all say, you know, uh, maybe they made their themselves sick. Yeah, but, 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 you know, there, there's another part of that um, for me that doesn't go around and try to, as, as I used to say, um, as part of the healing community when I was dealing with rape and sexual assault. I'm not one that goes around and tries to blame the victim. I'm not trying to say, okay, this is what happened and, and it's all your fault. That's, that's not at all what I would ever try to say. But if, if it comes up in part of the process, then why is it there? And, and what does it take to heal? And so if, if the course of here is then telling me that all this healing is, is all about, is about learning to love or loving Hmm, then how can I be more loving? How can, how can we affect a change if that's the case? Any love that we give to one, we give to the whole, and that love is healing in itself. Sonia, welcome. Hello, hello. Um, I am righteous. We are the love of God. By removing the blockage, we can be the love we were created to be. Uh, and, and that's what the course is all about. In the introduction, it says removing the blocks to your awareness of love's presence, which is your natural inheritance. The opposite of love is fear. But what is all encompassing can have no opposites. If it's all encompassing and it has no opposites, it's us who have been chosen at every moment when we experience fear or we experience anything less than our ultimate love. It is us who have chosen that. And not necessarily something that God is, 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 you know, is given to us. And so we have to then change our mind. To heal or to make joyous is therefore the same as to integrate and make one. That is why it makes no difference to what part or by what part the sonship, the healing is offered. Every part benefits and benefits equally. So, um... So if that be the if that be the case, anytime, anytime we're praying for anybody, no matter where what situation they're in, it's as if we are healing ourselves, healing others, healing the entire planet. I, it gets me. I'll tell you this. It really gets me when um, people get on the television and they say, well, God bless America. It's like you can't bless America without blessing um, South Africa. You can't bless South Africa without blessing Canada. You can't bless Canada without blessing Italy. You can't bless Italy without blessing South America, Canada, Italy, um, and, and Tunisia and Ecuador and all these other places. You can't just, I mean, and this idea that we can, you know, like localize God and say that God is here and not there is ridiculous. And it is a trap that a lot of people have fallen into over the years. I remember being in New Thought classes and people trying to make it seem as though God was just for, you know, metaphysical people or New Thought people or or, or I mean, and heaven forbid they would think that that it was only for a course of miracles. People, God is everywhere, present in all, through all, as all. And the moment we start to try to like um, um, capsulate or 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 make it seem like it's not for all, we then just negated the very essence of what it is and shown that we don't know what we think we know because we have viewed it from that perspective. And so, oh, it becomes this whole thing of just recognizing and understanding um, what this is all about. Oh, I love it. I love it. I love it. Um, that was so funny. It took me a minute to get back here online and to get all this stuff straightened out. Okay, so healing is a thought by which two minds perceive their oneness and become glad. Gladness calls to every part of the sonship to rejoice with them and to let God go out into them and through them. 
Only a healed mind can experience revelation's lasting effects because revelation is an experience of pure joy. You know, it is amazing to me. Um, I and and I probably shared this with you guys before too, that um, when when people tell me about their um, their being spiritual or their spiritual insights or you know or talk about this thing, I'm always looking for that joy, that underlying um, joy that we all have, and and. And if I don't see love, or if I don't see that underlying joy, I'm always sitting there thinking like, maybe, 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 maybe you don't have it as well as you thought. And so maybe it, it becomes this thing of like, well, you need to tell your heart or you need to tell your face that, you know, what you really say that you believe. Because if, if, it is true if it is present if it is if it's there if that wellspring is there then joy would be the result not this idea that we need to sacrifice or suffer and all that other stuff yeah it is um it's it's just this total like always giving okay so thoughts are increased by giving them away and and so it becomes this thing of we have this tendency to believe um, when we're in our egos of this body against that body and this person against that person and everybody trying to get, 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 get. But God, love, healing, joy, all of that stuff is not about get, 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 but about how can I give? How can I give? How can I give? And so it becomes this thing of, if, you know, in my giving, ah, that's when I'm elevated. So here, here's the funny thing. I was in the grocery store yesterday. I know I'm jumping around. I'm, I'm talking, ugh going on because I, I that whole computer thing threw me but I was in the grocery store the other day and um, as I get up to the cashier she says hi how are you and and we start having this conversation and it was so funny because what she said to me is is you know I find that my day goes a lot quicker when I'm very nice to people and if I'm nice and I talk to them it's like my day just goes by so fast and then before I know it it's all over and it's time to go home and I thought <laughs> I was like isn't that special I was like well um Maybe, just just maybe, if you just uh, connect with people and are nice to them anyway, then it'll become who you are and not something that you choose to do every once in a while to make your day go by. I was like, life is like that. And I wasn't trying to correct her or anything. I just, and, 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 and I don't even think I said all that to her. I was just thinking it in my mind. Like, is there another way of being? Is there possibly another way of being when you experience joy or when you know the truth? Is there another way of being? It is all about this idea of us connecting and knowing that we're one and that oneness. And as we experience that oneness, I connect to you, you connect to me. As I experience that whole thing, as it, mm, it just poof, it's so good. Oh my God, I don't believe I did that. It's so good. Um, spirit getting is meaningless and giving is all. Having everything, spirit holds everything by giving it and thus creates as the Father created. Um, and so this whole thing, this invitation to the Holy Spirit, it says in here that thoughts increase by being given away. Now, um <sighs> Thoughts increase by being given away. Thoughts increase by begin, being given away. That's totally contrary to what this society tells you. This society um, that we live in has been, um, you know, we, we see people tr trying to keep a secret. Um trying to keep secrets, trying to keep things from one another, um, holding out as if somehow uh, that the contrary is true. Yes, yes. And 
And so it becomes this thing of, of just trying to figure out um, if that's the case, if thoughts are increased by giving, how can I give more? How can I stop thinking about me, 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 gimme, 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 and then really just get into this, um, this, this sharing, this total sharing. You guys have it because you're here. You guys have it because you're sharing A Course in Miracles and not because it makes you taller in the world, not because it makes you better in the world, but because you know that what you teach, you learn, that what you teach grows, what you share grows and expands. And so it becomes this thing of trying to reverse the thinking that, you know, that everybody has had, that the world is taught. Is it becomes this reversal, this total reversal, and let me see how I can how I can be the correction here. And by correcting my mind, other minds join me, and we are all corrected together. Um, so so you know it becomes this thing of when I feel this need, um, you know, going through this stuff with my dad. Um, as we sit around and we have these conversations, I'm always trying to um, say the things that it seems as though um, my siblings don't want to say because some things are just hard to say. Some things are hard to say because who wants to say that, that it's possible that he may not, you know, survive this whole thing. Who wants to hear those words? Who wants to to think about um, or, or, or not have faith? Um, nobody wants to do that. And, and it becomes this thing of there being this elephant in the room that nobody quite wants to acknowledge or talk about. But it's there. We do that in relationships as well. I mean, how often do we have something that's sitting there and we don't want to acknowledge it or don't want to call attention to it because it seems as though if we call attention to it, what we fear will then ex happen necessarily because all of a sudden we've pointed a finger at it or, 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 or made it, you know, brought it into the conversation. So if we if we have this this thing that thoughts are increased by giving them away if we have it in our minds that it's increased why not change it so that we take away the sting out of it because I'll tell you there is um nothing nothing everything is there for our healing and for our holding nothing Nothing that we see is made for our demise or to hurt us. And so it becomes a thing of just figuring out how to put it in a framework of understanding or trying to heal an idea so that it no longer carries with it this, this ominous sting that it's no longer something that we fear, but rather something that we then embrace. And I think that we could change around the vibration of so much if we stopped putting all the fear into all this stuff. Nothing real can be threatened and nothing unreal exists. And so if we stop with um, some, of the, 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 some of the thoughts that we've always had, if, if we could get a new way of thinking about um, a, about life, about our healing, about what it means to be in a body and what it means to pass out of this. I think we would take away a lot of the sting that goes on with people. Um, because so much of what we do is based on these fears and these fears of something that is totally um, inevitable. So... I remember when I was growing up and, um, you know, all of us girls, as we grow up, we get our cycle, our menstrual cycle. And uh, it is as natural 
it is as natural as 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 breathing almost i mean it's a part of the course of our evolution and so so what do we do do we do we make it seem like there's something inherently wrong with it do we celebrate it how is it that we can then change around all of all of all of the ways in which we think about those things a lot of times we have we have just built up so much gunk around stuff that we can't even get through it so this is where this is where um we invite the holy spirit in right because <laughs> because um because because it, it says in here, let me let me read this to you. I have said already that I can reach up and bring the Holy Spirit down to you, but I can bring him to you only at your own invitation. And so as I ask the, the Holy Spirit to heal, um, heal my family around this issue, I'm also asking that my mind be healed. And I'm also asking that as a culture, as a nation, we be healed in how we see this transition of our life, this, this whole transition thing. And let's feel it with love as opposed to fear. And, and, and when we do that, then we get, you know, we really get to the truth. You know, so many people believe that, that this thing, these transition moments are about um, some kind of punishment. Um, and, and, and chapter six, doesn't chapter six speak to that, that whole notion that we had prior to this, that somehow God was trying to punish us, you know, that, that there was something that we've done wrong. And so then we've got this, you know, we've got, we've, we've got this, you know, (laughs) and, 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 and it's simply not the case. It's simply not true. And so, so it's like, mm, oh gosh, I want to, I want, like, I, I wanted to think about this. <sighs> Should I turn to that chapter and, and read or, or see? Mm. So you, so, so in chapter six, it talks about the lessons of love the message of the crucifixion and how if we simply change around how we see things, how, how, how we interpret things, we'll see that God is not punishing us. God is not attacking us. There is nothing that you've done wrong. It's simply that you are not your body. You are so much more. And if you recognize that you can let that part of you go, hmm, then it would take away all the sting. It would take away all the hurt. Um, <laughs> so, um, yeah. I mean, I mean, and this is this is so, so, so wonderful. Assault can ultimately be made only on the body. It can only be made on the body. And if you think that you're only a body, then it's not that you're looking from a, for attack from outside of you. It's because you first attacked yourself by thinking that that limited thought about who you are and what you are. So, so if you want to open up to something different, if you want to open up to something bigger, go beyond this idea that you are just your body because you are not just your body. You are so much more than just a body. So um, let me, let me, there's something else that I was reading today that I want to share with you before I run out of time. I'm almost out of time. Um, Okay. um, So, so let me read this to you because I'm, 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 I'm always reading something. And so this is not out of the course. This is out of a philosophy of Jesus by Ernest Holmes. Um, we have patterned our lives after the lives of others. And yet Emerson told us that imitation is suicide and that every man should watch the spark of genius that flashes across his own mind and trust it. Personality, no matter how winsome it may be, or convincing, or how dominant, is more than the is 
is more than a mask we wear, for it is a manifestation of an inner hidden principle, a divine spark within us that uses both the mind and the body for its own expression. So, um, so in this, he was basically, well, well, you heard what he's talking about. It becomes this thing of, of, of us recognizing that the divine is lensing itself and speaking through us as us all the time. And if we're busy trying to be like somebody else, we're not letting our own divine spark so shine. But the other thing is, is that, you know, what he was pointing out here is that we're not just bodies. We're not just physical beings, but rather divine beings. And as divine beings, you've got a divine message, a divine design for your life, not just you, but all of us. And so then, then how does that manifest itself? How does that come through? Um, and so it is, so he says, he goes on to say that for personality is the flowering of the spirit within us, the coming forth of a secret relationship that we have with God. And, and, and not so secret that others, you know, that we're trying to make it sound like it's not, that it's something private or something, but all of us have come here for our part that we're supposed to play in this God consciousness that is us. And so it becomes this thing of, of waking up, waking up to the awareness of who and what we are. Um, <laughs> as you teach, so shall you learn. And if you teach imitation, then that will be what you'll learn. And that's what you'll be showing other people. But but really, it's about doing it your own way. It's about having your own flavor and your own flair. Good night, Christine. Um, Christian, Christian, Christian. Good night, baby. Um, but it becomes this whole thing of, of, um, of learning this... <sighs> All of this stuff. I mean, it, it is, you know, it is, it is just so, so marvelous. Um, yeah. And, and uh, it goes on here. I mean, there's so much, there was so much in here, but one who finds himself in God will discover God in others. And so we can't be about this idea that God is over here and not over there, that God is in one and not in the others, all of this stuff and in every aspect of life. Um, I read a piece today that, um, that said that all of us are given 86,400 credits when we wake up in each day. And these 86,400 things they went on to say was the seconds of our lives, the seconds of our day, that, that each of our days we get so many seconds in which to live. But the truth is, is that we only get one second at a time, one moment at a time to live, one moment at a time to love, one moment at a time to be who we are. And in, in that moment, how are we flowing our energy? What are we doing? You know, how are we loving? How are we seeing? What are we manifesting? What are we teaching? So if I act like I was fearful, like Jesus, when, when it talked about this crucifixion, if I act like I was fearful, it would say to you that I believed in attack. If I act like I was fearful about what's going to my, my father, what ultimately happens to him, it will say that I believe in attack or that I believe in a body more than I do in a spirit. So since I believe, I believe, I believe that, that God is, the kingdom is at hand. The kingdom is at hand and is spread out before me. It's spread out before you. There is nothing that exists that stands outside of God. And since I know this, that means that I know also that whether it is in body or out of body, whether it is my glasses or this book, God, 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 all the time, everywhere, present, in all, through all, as all, just God. And so how could anything be separate? How could anything be taken away from me? It's always divinely given to me. It is giving, giving of itself 
all the time. And so there is nothing else. There is no other place to be. It is simply an awareness, a shift in consciousness, all that stuff. So my mind is joined with yours. My mind is joined with my dad's. My mind is one with all minds. And I'm grateful that your mind is there and that I'm here and that we can connect it with each other and love one another from that perspective. There is nothing else. So I want to be, I want to have, um, a shift. I'm always asking, you know, let me have a shift in my, when, when I'm tempted to see something else, Holy Spirit, ah, thank you for the correction. I need a shift and sometimes we all need a shift. Sometimes we forget simply so we can remember and simply so we can remind somebody else. And so it becomes this beautiful thing of, of, of spirit always giving to you, no matter whether it's here or someplace else, always, always, always giving. So you guys, I'm, I'm, I know I've asked and I've said, you know, continue to pray for me and my my dad and my whole family. Um, but I also recognize that as we pray, as we give, as we bless, we're not only blessing ourselves, I'm blessing, we're not only blessing another, we're blessing ourselves and we're blessing the world and everything in it because we can't, one can't be healed alone. All are healed through the process of that. And that's so good. It's so juicy. It's so wonderful. It's so wonderful. Yeah, so yeah, it's wonderful to be in love. So listen, um, yeah, there you go, Ellen. So listen, um, I'm going to read this little piece. Um, uh, I, I think I'm out of time, but but never mind. I mean, never you mind. I'm going to read this little piece um, for you. Um, the light of God surrounds me. The love of God enfolds me. The power of God protects me. The presence of God watches over me. The mind of God guides me. The life of God flows through me. The laws of God direct me. The peace of God abides within me. The joy of God uplifts me. The strength of God renews me. The beauty of God inspires me. And wherever I am, I know that God is. And so it is. I know that wherever you are, God is. And so it is. So blessings to you. I love you all. I will, I'll be here tomorrow. Um, and hopefully I'll have all this computer stuff straight. So I don't feel so discombobulated, but everything happens as it is and, and as it's supposed to be. And so it is. So thank you all. And I shall, um, be listening and talk to you soon. Love you. See ya. I'm giving up the mic. Wow. Thank you, Sandra. It was lovely to hear that prayer. That was an extended version of what I know. It was lovely to hear that prayer. Sing it.